name is Christian LeBlanc and I'm a 22 year old from Vancouver, Canada. For the past seven months, my girlfriend and I have been traveling around Southeast Asia and during that time we've seen 10 countries. We've been able to do amazing things. We've learned to scuba dive in Thailand, we swam with whale sharks in the Philippines, and we even saw the world's largest religious monument in Cambodia. Over the past two months, I've been getting a lot of attention on social media. My photos and YouTube videos have been shared by BuzzFeed, Reddit, Immigr, The New York Times, and several other news agencies. Every time my photos get shared, I get the same comments. People asking me how I afforded it, how I planned it, and if I'm rich. Well, to answer the last point, I want to start by saying no, I am not rich. I actually was able to pay for my whole trip on my own, other than my flights, which I thank my parents for. You'd be surprised, because actually Southeast Asia is very cheap. In 10 countries, I probably spent a total of $10,000 US. So it's not, it's not nothing, it's not pennies, but it definitely is cheap when you consider the things I've seen and the experiences I've had. I would never go back on that decision. It was worth every single dollar. I've been able to pay for my whole trip through my hard-earned dollar, which I earned through jobs like construction, I was working for my home university, I used to teach students, so everything I paid for was my own dollar. Now that I'm back in Canada, I'm coming back basically broke, but if I could do it again, I definitely would. You can definitely have an amazing travel across Southeast Asia with only $5,000. That's enough to let you see the Southeast Asia circuit, which is basically doing Thailand, Laos, Vietnam, and Cambodia. Investing and traveling is worth every penny. I feel like the investment not only repaid itself through countless experiences and memories, but it's also an investment in yourself, which is cheesy, but it's very true because you do learn a lot about yourself and where you want to be. The reason I'm making this video is because I want to let people know that traveling is not just for the rich. Today's video is going to be broken down into two parts, how to afford your trip and how to plan your trip. To start my video, I want to explain to you guys how you can afford your own trip. Sell all your stuff. Before leaving, I had a car, I had electronics, and another stuff sitting around the house. I set out on Craigslist, posted a bunch of ads, I got my car picked up for a decent price, I sold my, my old iPad, I sold my dad's old computer. If you actually looked around your house, I'm sure you'd find a bunch of stuff that you don't even need. So put it on Craigslist, put it on eBay, and earn a few extra dollars. My next point is to put money aside. So if you're working full-time, part-time, or even just odd jobs, start putting a percentage of your money away. If you're working jobs like cash, why do I keep saying cashier? I don't know why I keep saying cashier, it's not a cashier. If you're working in a restaurant, you'll be earning lots of tips, so I recommend putting that cash aside. It can be really easy to see the cash laying around and just spend it, so as soon as you can, put your cash in the bank. My third point is to spend less than you earn. I know that sounds obvious, but a lot of people say it and they don't actually realize what that means. For me, that meant moving back home with my parents for the last four months of school. Now that wasn't always glamorous, it wasn't always fun, but it was a sacrifice that I was willing to make so that I could go overseas. That saved me a few thousand dollars just on rent. I also started packing lunches more often. If you pack a lunch every single day of the week, you're saving yourself about $40. If you multiply that by 52 weeks in a year, that's over $2,000. Little transactions add up quick. My fourth point is find a way to subsidize your travels. For me, I went on exchange, and this allowed me to get a scholarship through my school, which actually helped cover some of the costs. There's other great ways to do this too. There's always the option of just working abroad. I've had a lot of friends who've actually worked in places like Australia, which allow one year working visas quite easily. And this allows them to save up more money than they could even earn at home. And they work in a different country for about a year, less than a year, six months. And with that money, they can travel through Asia for another six months to a year. So this is a great option for someone who's just looking to get away from home and mix it up. Another great way is actually through house sitting. And this is fairly new. But basically, wealthy families who have extra homes need people to sit their homes and actually take care of their dogs, their pets, whatever it may be. And you can actually stay in their luxury homes in countries like Bali, Thailand. I feel like my arms aren't being used enough. I need to throw them in. Fifth point is to budget. And I'll actually show you guys the application I use. I use Microsoft Excel. And down below, I've included the link to my Google Drive account. So you can actually download the same Excel sheet or simply do it through Google Drive, which is totally free. And I'll just show you guys really quickly how I used Excel. All right guys, so as you can see here, this is the Excel spreadsheet I've made. So it says travel budget. And what I have here is my checkings account. So what I have in my bank, I have my credit card, which I owe $100, so it's in the negative. Uh, scholarship, let's say $1,000. Uh, item one, two, three, what that really means is like items I plan to sell, I'll probably get $380 for it. They're just examples. 
So here I have guaranteed funds. So funds I'm expected, uh, sorry, that I'm, I'm guaranteed to have. And then here I have incoming funds. So I know I have two weeks of work left. That's going to be about $1,000. Money Jim owes me, stupid Jim. He owes me $150. And stuff like selling your car, textbooks, basically things that you expect to come in. And then you take the two numbers, add them together, you get your total funds. So 5000 plus 4000 about 9000 almost $10,000. And then from here you can go to your expenses. And so I have large expenses, so flight two ways. It's going to be about $1,200. If you book in advance, this is actually a very realistic number. If you book last minute, you can expect to spend as much as $2,000 to get to Southeast Asia from Europe or North America. Uh, other large expenses you may encounter are backpacks. Backpacks, you want to actually spend around $200. You want to get a good one. Scuba diving course, for me, I knew I was going to do that. That's $300, so I, I accounted for it up front, knowing I was going to do that. Uh, and then, so I have total one-time costs of 1700 And then I also have my monthly costs. So I know every month I'm going to face cell phone, rent, food, transportation, miscellaneous. So miscellaneous is stuff like, you know, toothbrushes, to toothpaste, um, whatever else that comes along the way. And for me, I had rent because I was actually renting in Bangkok for my first four months. So you're going to ignore this number, but you can put something like accommodations, which you know, for you might be the equivalent of $8 times 30 days. Put that number there instead. And then from there I multiply it by the amount of months I plan to travel. So if I'm paying 450 for rent, multiply that by 7, that's $3,150. Take all your expenses and add them here. So I have my total monthly expenses of 7525 and my total one-time costs, which came from up here, of 1700 Add all your costs together, my total costs are 9225 So the final calculation is basically taking the total amount of money I expected to have and the total expenses I expected to have. And then you take the, the budget and minus away the expenses, I now have $430 left over. And obviously guys, a spreadsheet is very basic, it's just a total example of how I actually did mine. Um, and so you can either download this Excel sheet and turn it into your own. Um, you'll have to know how to use Excel a little bit. It isn't self-explanatory, but you can learn very quickly. And I actually highly suggest using Excel. It's a great tool. You can also do this just on a sheet of paper, and it all works just as well. The next point is to travel with someone. <laughs> Traveling with a friend will cut your costs immensely. There's lots of costs like accommodations or transportation. Basically anything that you can share with your friend, this will cut your costs in half. And this can save you a lot in the long run. And my final tip to affording a trip is to make sacrifices. And I'm not talking about your pets. You can leave Snooper at home. Dogs leave Snooper anyways. The kind of sacrifices I'm talking about are simply cutting out some habits. So if you're a big online shopper, put your credit card away. If you love your coffee, maybe make coffee at home instead. And while your Starbucks coffee may only be $5, just remember that $5 can go so much further, especially if you're going to Asia. $5 is your lunch and dinner for the day. $5 is a bus ticket to the next city. $5 is also an hour-long foot massage, which are amazing by the way. Keep in mind you'll have to make some reasonable sacrifices, but if you really want to travel, you'll make it happen. This brings me to my second point of the video, and this is how to plan your trip. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm not a big planner, but there's definitely a few things that you'll want to plan before going overseas. The first thing is quite obvious. You need to decide what countries you want to see. So for me, I really wanted to go to Southeast Asia. I wanted to see Thailand, I wanted to see Cambodia, Vietnam, and from there I knew I would just add on more countries as they were. So once you've decided which countries you want to see, you need to figure out when their high seasons are and their low seasons, especially if you're going to Southeast Asia. There are certain months in the countries where you will simply get rain on rain on rain. And so you want to make sure you avoid visiting the countries at those times. Places like Vietnam, Thailand, China, they get hit with really bad monsoon seasons. So if you go traveling there at the wrong time, you're going to have a bad time. Keeping in mind the weather, also look into what kind of cool events are going on. So Thai New Year's happens in April, there's the full moon party that happens at the end of every month, and those are all cool things that you can actually plan your trip around. Each country has their own cool points of interest. So once you've figured out what countries you want to see, you need to start picking out what local attractions you want to see. I like to break it down by cities. 
So each city has lots of hostels and hotels. Once you're in that area, you can either rent a bike or take a bus to get to other attractions. So basically, just have a loose plan of what there is to see in each country and with each town. My favorite way to travel was actually with very loose plans. So I would show up into a city with almost no recognition or any knowledge of the town, and I'd simply plan my day as I went. I know a lot of people don't like traveling that way, and if you're the kind of person that would rather have their trip planned down to the minute, then you'll definitely want to do a bit more planning. But my point is, you don't need to stress yourself in thinking that you need to have everything figured out before going. Make a rough itinerary of what way you'll be traveling. Most people who do Southeast Asia will start in Bangkok and end in Bangkok. So it's really key to plan your trip so that you're not doing too much backtracking. Most people will do Southeast Asia, starting in Thailand, going north into Laos, and then heading east into Vietnam, south into Cambodia, and then back to Thailand. By doing the circuit, they limit the amount of travel they have to do, and they cut costs a lot that way. So it's definitely a good idea to have a rough plan of how you plan to get around the country. For the price, my favorite way to get around is definitely the sleeper train. They're safe, they're comfy, and they go by pretty quickly if you're able to fall asleep. You can also book flights locally for under 30 US dollars if you're able to plan them at least a month in advance. If you're more cost sensitive or not able to plan so far in advance, then buses and trains are definitely your next best option. When it comes to planning transportation and accommodations, you can almost always book it the same day. So don't stress yourself thinking that you need to have all your buses and hotels planned out. The only time where that doesn't apply is if there's a big festival. As for day planning, Whenever I arrived in a new city, the first thing was to always check into a hotel or hostel. You're carrying around a lot of bags and the last thing you want to do is carry them around for the rest of the day, especially in the Southeast Asian heat. Whenever I booked hotels, I would usually do a bit of scouting using Agoda.com. And Agoda gives you a price matching system that basically looks at Expedia, looks at Travelocity, it takes all the prices and gives you the best one. So you're able to book at the cheapest rate. Keep in mind though, sometimes it can be the same price to book in person and I actually like to pay in person because it means all the money is going to the hotel or hostel owner who is a local and obviously has less money than the corporate giant like Agoda. Agoda is really great as well because it gives you reviews so you're able to see what other travelers said about the hotel or hostel. Often the hotels and hostels are in the same areas so if you don't like something you can easily move to the next one. And once I've checked into my hostel or hotel and gotten rid of my bags the next thing I'll do is I'll actually search the best things to see or do in that city and you'll quickly find blogs and articles that give you lots of recommendations. Not only is the internet a great resource, but so are other travelers. So whether you're taking a bus, a train, or staying in a hostel, you'll meet so many people who have already done what you're hoping to do and they can give you the best advice. A lot of the time that's actually how Laura and I have found other groups to join and this is always way more fun than simply traveling in a small group. <coughs> 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 Basically, if I can summarize my tips, select what countries you want to go to, when you want to go to them, and what main attractions you want to see in them. From there, plan a rough route and start your trip. You can plan things on a daily basis, including transportation, accommodations, and what things you're going to go see. It's so easy to rent a scooter. For $5, you can have a scooter for the day, and it gives you basically access to anything in the area. Thanks so much, you guys. I really hope these tips on how to afford your trip, and as well as how to... Thanks so much, you... That's painful, right? Yes. I really hope these tips on how to afford and plan your trip are helpful. And if you guys have any other questions, make sure to just ask them below and I'll try to answer as many of you guys as possible. In the next week, I'll also be posting another video on travel tips. So it'll be everything from what to pack, what not to bring. And after that, I'll be posting another video on what cool spots there are in Southeast Asia and what I recommend seeing while you're there. And of course, I'm always posting new vlogs of my trip in Southeast Asia so you guys can actually see what experiences we had firsthand. So make sure to subscribe you guys and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Thanks guys.